Hello there, and welcome to Casual Fridays, the podcast where weekly themes are discussed through personal experiences, anecdotes, and storytelling. I am your host, Dada, and this podcast is part of my I Read Aloud channel on YouTube, where I read fairy tales, short stories, children's stories, fables, poetry, letters, and excerpts. So if you like such content, make sure to subscribe. You'll find me on YouTube in the search box under at I Read Aloud. I also want you to know that this podcast airs every Friday on the following platforms. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Samsung Podcasts, Podcast Index, Listen Notes, and RSS, and Spotify. Today's episode is titled On Expectations, and if you think about it, you will not have any expectations of yourself or of others if there aren't people around you. So if you were alone, living in a hermit mode, so to speak, um, you don't need to have any expectations uh, of other people or of yourself. So basically, the presence of people cause you to have expectations. I can tell you from personal experience that having expectations, especially high ones of yourself and others, can cause you a lot of misery. And I've actually lived with high expectations for most of my life. And it's only in the past two or three years that I've learned to let go of expectations. And believe me, I do lead a much happier life now. So let's start with how do you know that you are expecting too much of yourself? If you are a perfectionist, if you are overly critical of yourself, if you are a people pleaser, if you set goals to please others to meet their expectations and not your own, if you take on too many tasks and have too much on your plate, if you have a constant need for achievement and expect to be 100% all the time, all these are signs that you expect too much of yourself and expect yourself to be some superhuman. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. And when you set unrealistic expectations, then you would feel stressed and upset when things don't go as planned, even if they deviate slightly from the plan. And you end up being very judgmental and critical of yourself and others. And you end up micromanaging and fixating on very small things so that everything is as it should be. And, of course, just listening to all this, I'm sure you feel exhausted. <laughs> it is exhausting. And as I said before, um, you wouldn't have expectations if you didn't have uh, people around you. So, let's just start with relationship, relationship expectations or expectations in relationships, whether it's friendships, family members, um, love relationships, and whatnot. So, sometimes in relationships, you expect your friends to behave in a certain way. Your friends, your family, your lovers, whatever. You expect them to behave in a certain way, and you are surprised if they say something contrary to you and your expectations. And you expect people to be as kind as you are. And these are two things I suffered a lot from myself because I am a very kind person. I try to be fair towards everybody. I'm nice. And I always expected people to be the same as I am. And uh, I was constantly shocked by people's uh, reactions, by people's behaviors towards me. I mean, how could someone behave like that towards someone who is so nice? And that always used to be a question in my head. I used to, to be in resentment about it all the time. And I had to learn the hard lesson that you cannot project your beliefs, your belief system, the way you are on other people. You have to accept others as they are and you have to sometimes take a step back when you meet new people and not just you know be so nice from the beginning and so giving and so loving you know <laughs> from the get-go sometimes you need to step back a bit assess the person uh, get to know them uh, little by little and then see if this person deserves your kindness and your fairness and your love and your attention and this goes for everybody not just 
uh, you know, lovers, we're talking about friendships here, we're talking about um, family members even who are around you. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with having standards in relationships with other people. You have standards where you, um, you know, teach yourself to notice red flags, to notice green flags, um, to you, you have to know what you want in a partner, in a friend, in a family member. Uh, but when you set high expectations from others and you expect them to reflect your behavior, this is asking too much of people. And also, when you have this imaginary set of standards, this imaginary set of expectations that you expect others to follow without them knowing what they are, that's falling into your own trap because you are not looking at the other person and seeing the other person for who they are. You're seeing your projections on them and getting upset, uh, you know, that they're not meeting your expectations. And that is not fair, neither for you nor to them. It's not fair to any relationship you have, again, whether it's a friendship, a love relationship, or a family member relationship. I think my earliest um, encounter with expectations was when I was a teenager uh, with my parents. You see, we live in the Middle East, and in the Middle East we have... Um, very strong familial ties and we do everything as a group, as a family. So if you want to go out for lunch, the whole family goes out. If you want to go to the park, the whole family goes to the park and so on and so forth. And at the time, I was being exposed to a lot of Hollywood movies. And in Hollywood movies, you have a lot of separations in families and they would portray how you know, the daughter would have lunch or dinner with her father alone or lunch or dinner with her mother alone. And I used to like that idea. I mean, it, it appealed to me. I didn't think at the, the time, uh, you know, that the, the cause for this situation uh, of the lunches with parents separately was, you know, a special situation of separation or divorce. And I only concentrated on what I liked, which was having a conversation with one parent at a time alone, not, you know, en masse in a group where you're barely heard. I mean, when you're in a group with your siblings and, and uh, other family members around, of course, you cannot have a conversation uh, that is, you know, um, conducive to reaching uh, some kind of understanding about an issue or whatever. It's kind of like general conversations then, right? So, uh, for a long time, I used to resent my parents, and I used to think they were bad parents, um, and I used to blame myself for having this bad relationship with them, because why wouldn't they want to, like, take me out to a lunch or dinner alone, and, you know, uh, talk to me alone, and all that, and of course, with time, I understood it's more of a cultural thing, and of course, the situation itself, um, you know, my parents' marriage, where they really have a loving marriage, and uh, what happened was, at one point, my mom, she's a very smart person, I think she realized, or maybe I voiced to her at some point, uh, you know, that I would like to, like, go out with her for a coffee or a lunch alone or whatever, and she kind of got the message, and she started, you know, taking me out, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, and we do it till today, you know, going out, uh, you know, for lunches here and there or dinners and I really enjoy these times um, I just I mean I'm more of a person who uh, enjoys company the company of one person more than groups so if you, even with my friendships I like to have a dinner or lunch or like a, an encounter with one friend because I think the conversation is much richer and, and you really concentrate, concentrate on this one person and you really connect whereas when you're in a group it's more like okay let's laugh and joke about and have a general conversation. It's a, it's a different vibe. And um, so well, my mom caught up on that. And, and um, you know, I have to, to give tribute to my mom that she has really um, kept pace with my evolving ideals and ideas in life. Um, you know, and she really has been very attentive to my needs throughout my life. And 
And for those of you who feel they don't have a good good relationship with their mothers, I just want you to know that it's really a work in progress, like any relationship. You can't expect, you know, just because your mom birthed you that you can have a good relationship with her automatically. Um, you know, in the end, mothers also have their own baggage. They are human beings. They have their own childhood traumas, their own life traumas. They have a lot, of, a lot to deal with. And, you know, children usually are very... Um, a very harsh in their perception perception of their mothers because they just want mother the, the mother to be for them and the mother is supposed to be loving and giving and attentive and and all these you know uh, positive things and we are always you know um, upset if if uh, our mothers don't meet those criteria and you forget that uh, like any relationship. Uh, the mother-daughter bond, in this case because I'm a daughter, I'm going to talk about this, requires a lot of work. It's not something that just poof happens out of thin air so easily. Um, you know, no matter how much my mom was supportive of me, and no matter how much she tried to keep up with my changing ideas and my rebelliousness and all that as I was growing up, um, I didn't really, really connect with my mom. Um, until I was in my 30s, to be honest. I mean, I tried to work on a relationship in my 20s, but we really connected when I was in my 30s. And um, she really now is one of my best friends. But it required a lot of work on my part as well as hers. And it takes a lot of communication. Because in the end, about two human beings who, try, who are trying to have a relationship. So if you look at your mom as a human, as a person you would like to know, and as someone you want to build a relationship with, like any new lover you meet, let's say, or any new friend you meet that you would like to build a relationship with, then you can see your mom in a different light and you can build a beautiful relationship with her. I hope that you will all work towards that. Nothing happens by magic. Maybe some of you are very lucky to have this very strong bond uh, since childhood with your moms, but this is a very rare bond. If you have it, you are lucky and that's amazing. Uh, for those who have lost moms, um, you know, uh, at an early age, um, I can feel your pain. And I tell you from the experiences of friends who have lost moms that, yes, the void cannot be totally filled, but you can always find um, other women in your life who can really support you and be there for you, who can be really, you know, like a mother figure at times for you as well. And that is also a blessing. And I hope that you all have this kind of like motherly relationship with somebody in your life, whether it's your grandmother, uh, an aunt, uh, another, you know, uh, figure in your life, uh, a foster parent, whatever it is, an adoptive parent. And I hope that you experience this beautiful relationship. And remember, all relationships take work, even you know, with your mother figure. So I have definitely digressed here a bit. <laughs> I started talking about how, you know, the expectations, you know, I had expectations of the Western culture, if you will, and I, ha I was living in the Eastern culture. And so here it was unfair of me to, uh, you know, project my expectations on a certain relationship that cannot really exist in a different culture in the first place. Um, of course, since then I've had many, many relationships with lovers, with friends, and I, of course, also projected on them a lot of expectations because, you know, I was someone who was a people pleaser and who was a perfectionist and who was all things that I listened at the beginning of this episode. And, uh, of course, this has led to many failed uh, friendships and many failed relationships with men because you know when you have expectations that are not met you will constantly be disappointed and you'll feel that this is not for me this is not what i want and so you just move on and you break up and you move on and you break up and you move on and you repeat the same pattern on and on and on right so uh, just be very careful that setting standards you know uh for your relationships whether they're again friendships or love relationships or family relationships uh, is different from, uh, you know, projecting your expectations on others and expecting the impossible from other people just because you want it to be so. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to discuss now um, expectations at work. I met uh, a cousin of mine uh, about a month ago, and 
I knew that she had been frustrated a bit at work for a while because she felt that she wasn't really being promoted or getting the um, the salary that she wanted. She wasn't really appreciated. And actually, this wasn't news for me because I've also had so many jobs where I felt the same. So basically, I knew exactly what she was feeling. And because now I know better than what I used to know back then, when I when I had all these jobs, my advice to her was to let go of expectation. Just don't expect anything from your job. Your job is there for you to make money. And she enjoys her job. It's something she likes doing, you know. But just let go of expectation of the promotion, of the raise, of the whatever. Enjoy the job itself. And you know what? If you want something more, do it on your own. You can always, always invest some of your time in a little hobby or in a, a small side job or whatever, whatever you feel like doing in life. Whatever you feel you want to achieve at work, you can achieve outside of work but still through work, but it'll be like your own work. Maybe you can set up a small business. Do whatever. Whatever feels right for you that makes you feel fulfilled. You have to fulfill yourself and let go of the expectation or else you will live in misery at the job. And, you know, sometimes not all uh, companies that you work for are international companies and companies that can give you all these perks and companies that have, you know, a career ladder that, you know, you, you could just have expectations of, you know, reaching this level in so many years and so on and so forth if you are being evaluated positively on a constantly i mean not everybody works for for these like big companies and so when you're talking about smaller companies family companies uh, startups and all other sorts of companies and companies in the third world countries and companies uh, that uh, you know are very very small companies or even larger companies with no real standards how can you expect uh, you know, to be treated the same way as in, in these big multinational companies where they have like a system in place and you know, everything kind of moves like clockwork. So that is why, uh, you know, you can do some things at work to uh, manage your expectations. You must communicate your expectations clearly. You should discuss you know, uh, with your supervisors, your managers, communicate with them openly about what you expect, you know, uh, in your job and and where to go next. Even from the get-go, um, you should reinforce with reminders and remind them of your abilities and skills. And most importantly, you should hold yourself accountable, not only others, but yourself as well. So through this communication, you know, uh, with your superiors, your supervisors, whoever it is the company you report to, um, you could actually, you know, uh, get the vibe. Are they reciprocating, you know, your expectations? Do, do they agree with your expectations? Or do they tell you or hint uh, for you or that, you know, this is not going to happen, at least not anytime soon? And people usually are honest in these situations. And they tell you, you know, we don't have the budget. They tell you, you know, we would love that, but maybe in 10 years, not in five years, and so on and so forth. People generally usually communicate with you openly when you actually approach them in an open manner as well. So, of course, I'm not telling you not to uh, try and get what you what you want, what you desire at your job. But um, what happens when they tell you no? When they tell you we cannot do this, when they try to compensate, uh, you know, your promotion or your raise with giving you maybe some travel, when they try to compensate by giving you some time off, I mean, do you get upset and quit? If you don't like, if you don't like the job and you feel totally, you know, uh, this is not the place for you, when you're mis being mistreated and your boss sucks, yes, <laughs> quit, whatever. But when you have, you know, a, a, a relationship with your with your office mate that's uh, positive and where you feel that you know you are comfortable in your workspace then you don't quit because of such a thing and maybe you could look for another job and keep your your options open and see what happens but there's no guarantee that if you go to the second job you know that things will be better i mean how do you know you could maybe start off with 
a better salary, a better position, but uh, you never know how that goes uh, down the road and if you will enjoy the environment. So, you know, there are so many things at work that are at play uh, in your work uh, environment that, you know, you, you can't really know where you're headed in the end, no matter what you do. So, what, what, what do you do? Okay, you try communicating, and then what? The best thing to do is to let go of the expectation, as I said before. So, the first thing you do, I mean, how do you do it? How do you let go of expectation? That's a very good question, right? First of all, be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for the extra travel that's taking you to new places you haven't been before. Be grateful for the extra time off that you could, you know, maybe just sleep in your bed and put your feet up and do nothing. <laughs> Why not? You know, uh, be grateful for the job that you have and, and the opportunity to prove yourself, to do something that you enjoy doing, um, to be grateful if you want for your relationships with with your office mates, if it's good relations, you know, uh, sometimes you make friends at the office and, and it becomes like your second home. So look for these beautiful things around you and don't just, you know, concentrate on the expectation and just say, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting this and I don't want this and, 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 and com complain all the time. So then you'll be a miserable person. Now, you definitely have to identify your expectations. So you have to be honest with yourself. What do I expect? And you have to list it so that you know what your expectations are so you can let them go. And maybe you have to change your mindset about your expectations. And mainly here you have to let go of fear. Usually what drives your expectations is the fear of disappointing others around you. That, oops, if I don't get you know this promotion, what will my family think? What will my friends think? What will the society around me think, for example? So... You have to think of this differently. You have to think that, you know, I'm not afraid of anything. What do I care what people think? I am who I am. I believe in myself. I know who I am. I know I am manager material, even if I am not promoted to manager. And I can achieve my dreams uh, in other ways. I don't need this workspace to, to, to help me achieve my dream. And you can do this and... Let go of the fear and celebrate every victory. We forget to celebrate the small things, you know. Now what I do is when I do anything during the day, I pat myself on the back and I tell myself, bravo, bravo, dada, you did a good job. Whether it is washing the dishes, finalizing a contract, something small as feeding my dog and taking her for a walk, to something huge as, you know, closing a deal. Whatever it is, I pat myself on the back and I say, bravo, Dada, because it was something. It was an achievement. I celebrate it. I celebrate every victory, every achievement in my life. And I feel better about myself because when I celebrate these things, I'm celebrating my everyday life. And I, it brings me joy. And I realize, I notice that I did something positive and something good because most days we just go through the routine of everything we do a million things and we just you know we're miserable and we're tired and we're like oh i'm exhausted and we don't realize that we've done so many amazing things in our day because we don't stop to celebrate it so celebrate every victory everything that you know you do and you will lead a much happier life trust me and it's important to define your goals and desires. When you define your goals and desires in life and uh, you know what you want, you will notice that your desires are not linked to the job. Your goals in life have nothing to do with this job. So when you realize that, you can let go of the expectation. And be careful of your thoughts and enhance your actions. Because generally when we, you know, are get frustrated because of our expectations are not being met, we're frustrated and we get like frustrated in the office, frustrated and angry even in the office. And you don't want to project that, you know, to others. You, if you let go of expectation, then you have, uh, you focus on your journey, on your everyday life, and you, you lead a happier life in general and you're not so frustrated anymore. 
And as I said before, um, stop expecting too much of yourself. Let go of the need to be perfect. You don't need to be perfect. You are not superhuman. Stop comparing yourself to others. You are you. You are on your own journey. You are doing your own thing. You are amazing. Don't look at others what they've achieved. You you don't know what miseries other people are facing. Other people may have all the money, all the titles, all the whatever that you think is what you want, but they're miserable. You don't stop doing that. Just let go of comparison. Do not compare yourself to others and celebrate yourself. And as I said again and again, realize you are not superhuman. You are a human being. You have good days and bad days. And you don't need to constantly achieve things to prove yourself to anybody. And ultimately, learn to love yourself. Embrace who you are. Because when you have these high expectations and they are not met, you are going to be disappointed and angry and frustrated. But when you lower your expectations or you release expectations, life will surprise you. You will be amazed and happy at every new opportunity you get because you weren't expecting it and therein lies more happiness for you so i know it is not easy to let go of expectations and as i told you before i was someone who had a lot of expectations throughout her life whether it was with family friends work whatever um It was a long journey. It was not easy to let go of expectation, but you can do it when you are mindful and you're constantly focusing on uh, a better life for yourself. When you realize you have high expectations, that's the first step. So realization is the first step. And then you work on the things we discussed today, little by little, and let go of these expectations. It could take you a year or two years or five years, whatever it takes. Just be gentle with yourself, love yourself, and learn to let go of expectation. And catch yourself when you have high expectations of something, so that when you realize that you have that expectation, you can work on letting it go. So, This brings me to the end of this episode. And next week, we shall tackle the topic of loyalty. I hope you will tune in then. For now, I wish you a lovely weekend. And I send you all my love. Till next Friday.